no one understands flock. There, I said it. And yes, if you know me, you know I'm not a big flock fan. I mean, just take a look of some of the memes I've been posting about it lately. But, as a true Attack on Titan fan, I believe every character deserves a deeper look into her motives in order to understand her better. Well, except for Gross. He was terrible. Flock gets a lot of hate these days, for various reasons. So today, we're going to talk about the reasons why people don't like his character. And of course, I will give you my own opinion as well. And we will try to find out if Flock is really a well-written character. So, if you are not a Flock fan, please watch till the end of this video and tell me if I helped you understand him better. Don't forget to subscribe and to give this video a little like if you enjoy these character development breakdown videos and also it really helps my channel. Don't forget to click that bell icon to enable all notifications so you won't miss any of my future uploads or live streams. Now of course we will be talking about events that took place in the manga and there will be spoilers later on this video so please take this into consideration if you decide to keep on watching. So where did Flock even come from? Something a lot of people don't remember is the fact that Flock has graduated from the 104th cadets together with Mikasa, Reiner, Armin, Sasha, Connie and all of our main characters and of course also Eren who by now was already part of the Levi squad. So what happened to Flock since then? After the cadets split into their respected corps, our friends joined the scouts, Annie joined the military police and Flock joined the garrison. That is why he wasn't there on the day the Colossal Titan appeared for the second time and he didn't witness what our main characters experienced in that horrible fight. That is also why we never even heard of him up until later. When Flock later met the scouts he told John that something looked different about them after everything they went through fighting the titans. Later on, after the scouts defeated Road Race Giant Titan, the popularity of the Survey Corps went extremely high. That was the point when Flock decided to transfer from the garrison and into the scouts and was then placed in Klaus' squad alongside Marlow who also transferred from the military back when the scouts were still in hiding from Kenny Ackerman and his squad. And later Flock and his squad alongside two other squads will find themselves in the biggest battle for humanity facing the devastating attacks of the Beast Titan. Now let's understand something important about Flock. Flock is a coward and that is not my opinion, that is actually something he said about himself. But it seems that his cowardice comes from his belief that his death should not be meaningless. That is one of the things Flock fears the most, much more than actually dying. So I would not compare him to someone like Daz for example which was an actual coward. With Flock joining the fight he finally faced the titans, defended humanity, he stared death right in the eyes and got to live another day to tell about it. And that is the complete opposite of a coward. From that moment Flock was entitled to call himself a scout. A lot of people called Flock a coward for the way he acted before the attack but let me just remind you that this is actually the response I would expect to see from someone who is about to face a certain death. I bet a lot of us facing the same situation would have acted much worse. But as we know Flock didn't run away, instead he took on the beast, he witnessed all of his friends die and was the only soldier alive and later part of the only 9 scouts left of the entire survey corps. That fact will soon give a huge boost for Flock's self esteem and let's face it, being the only survivor after facing certain death just makes you a lot stronger as a person. But we'll get to that later on this video. So why did Flock decide to join the fight instead of running? The reason was Erwin. One of Flock's most evident personality traits is his respect for Erwin Smith. And Erwin's speech is what made Flock believe his death and those of all of his friends that died before will not be meaningless. And therefore Flock dedicated his heart for humanity. He also argued passionately for Erwin to receive the life saving titan serum believing that only Erwin is capable of making the choices necessary to guarantee victory for humanity and that he was the devil humanity needed in order to survive. That is actually one of the main reasons Flock is getting a lot of hate because he came against our three main characters at that time and also he tried to prevent one of them to come back to life. 
even went so far as to risk being attacked by Mikasa to keep her from taking the Titan injection from Levi. That just shows you how strongly he believes in Erwin and in the chain of command. As much as people don't like to hear that, Flock actually acted in the best possible way, in a way that a real soldier should act. He claimed that the choice to save Armin over Erwin was a result of emotions that cloud judgment. He accused Eren and even Levi of not thinking logically and also accused Jean and the others of not helping him back then, although he did admire Mikasa for finally understanding what needs to be done after a while. Now if we take this seriously, Flock is actually the voice of reason in this entire situation. He is not friends with Eren, Armin or Mikasa and naturally he doesn't share their feelings. So for him it was just madness letting go of the commander that he so admired just to save someone's friend which was an inferior soldier in his eyes. Not to mention the fact that he witnessed his own friends being killed by the Beast Titan only minutes before. For us it may be a beautiful moment when we got Armin back, but Flock believes that those who cannot give up something important to them for the greater good and refuse to listen to reason are childish. By that virtue, he thinks of those who know when to back off and restrain themselves from acting on their emotions as adults. And now I have to say that I absolutely agree with him. If this was an actual battle situation in our world and someone would have attacked one of the captains like Mikasa did to Levi, well, that would have ended much differently for her, because in our world that is called treason. And also, no way a person like Erwin, which is basically a general rank in our world, could be ever replaced by a young soldier. That just won't happen and for that I can absolutely see why Flock is angry as he watches the thing he believes in the most getting taken away right before his eyes for no good reason. I think that I would have acted the same way if I were him. But of course, as Attack on Titan fans, it is only natural for us to sympathize with the main characters, which in this case were obviously Eren, Armin and Mikasa. So it was expected of Flock to get the wave of hate. This moment was very crucial for the character development of Flock, when he saw the lack of logic and how things went according to people's emotions and that cost them the devil that should have saved them all. Not long after, the scouts find themselves facing the ocean and the manga switches to the other side of the ocean and a time skip of 4 years takes place, along with Flock's biggest change as a character. Those 4 years were crucial for Flock and the fact that we almost didn't witness any of the events that took place on those years is actually the reason people think Flock just got a sudden power boost and became one of the main characters out of nowhere. But that's actually not true. So let's talk about what happened to Flock during the years of the time skip. After the scouts took back War Maria, the entire server corps got an enormous boost in popularity for obvious reasons. And at that point everyone looked up to the scouts as the heroes of humanity, the only survivors and the last 9 people of the entire survey corps. And of course, because Flock was one of them, he was also considered a hero and as an equal member of the scouts. And when you are the only one that survives the beast titan and also one of the last 9 standing, that will make your own popularity to go sky high. And also your self esteem. And that is only natural. As we said, Flock was no longer the man he was before. He faced certain death and lived and whether we like it or not, that is a very prestigious title. Therefore there is no wonder why so many people decided to follow Flock later on and we will get to that soon. With the arrival of the anti marlen volunteers, Flock is among those assigned to watch over them and is assigned to guard their leader, Yelena. At some point during this time, Eren tells Flock his plan to use Zeke Jaeger to unlock the founding titan's power and to destroy all the enemies of Paradis with the rumbling. Flock agrees to Eren's plan and begins gathering allies from among the military to aid them, forming a secret faction known as the Jaegerists. This new group supports Eren's actions and their ideology is to do anything necessary to secure Paradis Island while Eren destroys the world. At that point in time, Flock adopts a more vindictive attitude towards humans outside the walls 
and once he created the Jaegerists, Flock becomes even more open to using violence against anyone who is not Eldian, or resists the efforts made by Eren. Whether they are Marleans or even his allies from the scouts, or from the anti-Marlean volunteers. Approximately 9 months later, Flock joins the Survey Corps at the raid on Liberio, where he sets explosives to destroy buildings around the internment zone. This is also where we first see the frictions between Flock and Jean, when Jean tells him to watch out for human casualties. But Flock disobeys his order and reminds Jean about all the people who died inside the walls. Like I said, Flock has become very vindictive towards people outside of Paradis, and you can see this clearly when he is not concerned with collateral damage and does not hesitate in burning entire city blocks in Liberio to the ground simply to deny resources to the enemy, with no thoughts of casualties that would result from it. On this attack, Flock also finally found himself a new devil to follow, as he witnessed Eren Yeager's actions and decided that just like Erwin once was, now Eren is the necessary evil, or devil, that can bring peace to Paradise. And that's what Flock always looked for, a suitable leader he can follow, and a true devil that will do whatever it takes. Flock knows what he's worth. And even though he is not on the same level as the scouts, he makes up for it with being extremely charismatic and cold-hearted, and is willing to do everything that needs to be done, just like we saw in previous chapters and also in the last one when he tried to blow up the ship. And that makes him extremely dangerous, because he is doing and willing to do things other people won't. And later on we see that when he turns against Yelena and the other volunteers as well. This is also the first time he mentions Eren sharing his plan with him months ago, and also when the Jaegerists took control over Paradise. That chain of events led us to Flock waiting to meet the scouts on the arbor and to the latest developments we had in the manga. And here is a fun fact, Flock lost his right arm, probably, when trying to basically defend Eren, just like Erwin lost his right arm doing the same years before. And yes, people are laughing at Flock for using Erwin's Shinzu Sasageo. And don't get me wrong, Flock is not close to being Erwin. But still, Flock admired him. And you can definitely see that when he uses Erwin's words to drive his men into battle. Sure, he uses a different technique by making them fear for their families. But some may say that fear is a better motivator. In any case, they have different approaches, that is for sure. Flock Forrester is a complicated character. He was a kid that joined the scouts for glory and to follow Erwin Smith. But as a result, he found himself facing humanity's greatest enemy and battle. He was the only survivor and he witnessed all his friends die. Just that is enough trauma to make any soldier break down. But instead, Flock took a stand and decided what he believes in. And currently, Flock believes in Eren Jaeger and in Paradise Island safety. You can't really blame Flock, he is yet another product of this cruel world, and in the end, he is only interested in defending his home. For him, this conflict is territorial, while others may take more things into consideration like ethics, or maybe thinking about other people around the world. Now I'm not saying one is better than the other, but I do think this situation is so much complicated to judge, and that is the beauty in Attack on Titan with no apparent villains or heroes, just regular people that are trying to do the best they can, living in this cruel, cruel world. So what do you think about Flock? I can imagine he is not your favorite character, but do you really hate him? If so, tell me why, and also tell me if my video helped you understand him a little better. I find it very strange that I don't see a lot of videos about him, so even though he is far from being one of my favorites, I do believe he had a major character development process that unfortunately was not so clear in the manga. And that is enough for me to make a video about him. So don't forget to subscribe and to give a little like to let me know you enjoyed this video. And also, don't forget to come by and say hi on my Discord or on any of my other social media accounts. And you absolutely should, because I've been doing really good job with my Attack on Titan memes lately. So go check it out if you need some more Attack on Titan in your life. And that is all for this video my titan loving friends, and I will see you all real soon. And until then, don't forget to dedicate your hearts for humanity, inside and outside the walls.